Hi gang, this is part two of the making of my BB-8 version 2 droid, where I'll show how I put fiberglass on the ball, or globe, to make it more rigid. As you can see, the thin walls of the cardboard globe deforms under the weight of the drive system. That means I have to put a lot of tape to hold it closed at the equator. Also, the poles don't follow the curve perfectly, and if the tape around the equator is not perfect, then it can interfere with the head. So I decided to cover a globe and a few layers of fiberglass, to make a more rigid and rounder ball. Warning, I've used epoxy resin a lot for making capacitors, but this is my first time working with fiberglass, so there'll be learning on my part as I go along, though I do get good at it. Starting with a new globe, I mark where I'll later cut the ball in half by drilling a hole at the equator, sanding it flat, and inserting a screw, followed by two more. I then sand down the globe, resulting in this. Using the three screws, I should be able to find the equator later. Before starting to apply the fiberglass, I give the globe one more cleaning. In addition to some fiberglass I already have, I bought some more from eBay, which took a few weeks to arrive. I'll be using leftover epoxy resin from older projects. And unfortunately, I had a false start with this globe, where some of that old resin didn't harden anymore. Scraping it off, I made an uneven mess. So it took a while to find another globe and start over. The deforming happens at the equator, so I'll put three approximately 12 inch diameter circular pieces around that. Then there'll be one piece on each of the north and south poles, which I'll show you how I work out later. Then for the next layer, I'll put them offset by 60 degrees, so that they overlap and add strength. And then I'll put another layer, again offset by 60 degrees from the one below it. I didn't know how many layers I'd do when I started out, but I ended up putting three layers. I mark where I'll cut the fiberglass, and cut it. Notice the gloves and sleeves. You should also wear a proper respirator and goggles. You don't want tiny glass particles in your lungs or eyes. Here's my setup. Over here I mix the resin and hardener. Here's the globe. And here's my ventilation fans. Looking more closely, here's the resin and hardener which have to be mixed together. I have separate containers for measuring each one, and even separate tools to make sure there's no chance of accidentally getting hardener in my resin bottle. And then my mixing container. I start by measuring out some resin. I have a mark on the container. This particular resin is to be mixed by volume, with a ratio of 5 to 1. For every 5 parts of resin, I have put one part of the hardener. Check your resin for how you're supposed to mix yours. Then I pour it into the mixing container. Notice that this one is a very thick or low viscosity resin. I clean up with a paper towel and throw it out so I won't accidentally use the same paper towel on my hardener parts. Then I pour some hardener into its measuring container, up to the mark. I pour that in the mixing container and clean up with a new paper towel. Then comes the mixing. Mix it very well. Scrape the container, stir in both directions. Spend a lot of time on this, otherwise your resin might not harden completely. To apply the piece to the globe, I start by applying resin using a paintbrush and the piece of fiberglass. Notice how the fiberglass shapes well to the globe's curvature. I don't want any wrinkles or overlapping. I make sure to wet the fiberglass well with the resin. After doing the first piece, I realize the fiberglass and resin are very transparent and I can see the equator well, so I remove the screws. After the second piece, I realize that there are all these drips that'll make the next pieces uneven, so I take it outdoors and sand it. I spend some time with an electric sander, but my sander's not very good. And I find that sandpaper, backed by a block of wood, works best. And here's the finished result ready for more fiberglass. Eventually I get to odd shaped areas, like the poles of my globe. So I prepare a paper template, and then transfer that to the fiberglass. Once the first layer is all on and sanded, it's time for the second layer. Before putting the resin, I get into the habit of marking where the pieces will go. And then I apply the resin. Notice that by this time I realized I didn't need to use paintbrushes, which had to be cleaned between uses. I found that some old flexible foam packing material worked as well, and I could cut off the hardened ends as I went along. I also keep darkening a mark I made for where the equator is, as I add more fiberglass and do sanding. Around this time I ran too low of that resin, and switched to another one I'd had sitting around, consisting of one bottle marked resin and the other activator. On one bottle it says to measure them by weight this time, instead of by volume, with a ratio of four part resin to one part activator. So for that I bring out my digital scale, and with the empty container on the scale, I zero it out. By guessing how much I'd need for the equator pieces, I put 88 grams of resin, which is 4 times 22, and 22 grams of activator, which brings the total to 110 grams. Notice that the resin has a higher viscosity, it's more liquid. 
That results in thinner layers, since there isn't a layer of just resin sitting on top of the fiberglass, like there was with the other thicker resin. Notice that I've picked up the trick of applying the resin in different directions, depending on the direction of the fibers at the fringed areas. I end up doing three layers of fiberglass, guessing that would be rigid enough without being too heavy or too thick. That's followed by a lot of sanding to get it round, first just doing it by eye. Finally the three layers are sanded, and I can start working on rounding it. Notice that rolling it along the equator it goes straight, but from North Pole to South Pole, or whichever they are, it doesn't always go straight. To help find where, I put the numbers 1 and 2 at the one pole, and 3 and 4 at the other pole. And when I roll it starting in a certain orientation, it always turns. Examining the video frame by frame, I find the problem is caused by a valley near one pole. During the last layer, I left a gap between this equator piece of fiberglass and this pole piece. And it's following that gap, or valley. I'll have to fill it in. Next, I need to find out the new outer diameter. For that I clamp a ruler to my square. I then hold a stick across that while rolling the ball under it. Most places it's around 12 and 1 inches, but in a few places near the poles it's around 12 and a quarter inches. I then mark and cut a 12 and a quarter inch diameter circle in a piece of cardboard. I find there's a flat spot at one pole, and I see the valley near it that I previously found. I add some fiberglass to that flat pole and the nearby valley. I then use my Dremel with a thin circular blade to cut it open at the equator. It doesn't cut all the way through though, but at least it cuts through the resin and fiberglass to the cardboard. So I next go at it with a knife. From opening up my previous globe, I know there's an extra thick cardboard ring inside the globe at the equator. Finally it opens. You can see the thick ring inside, which I next remove, until I have a smooth path to the edge. I lower BB-8 version 2's drive system into it, and I don't get the deforming I used to. In fact, it's hard to see any deformation at all. Success! I close it up and tape it back up. It's infinitely easier without the deforming. I'll do more sanding as needed, but so far so good. I have a shipment of new magnets on the way, and once they arrive I can get the head back on too. Well, thanks for watching. See my YouTube channel for more how-to videos like this. If you want to help support these videos, then you can through my Patreon page. Or you can go to my website and donate any amount you want. And if you like these videos, don't forget to subscribe. Give a thumbs up, share with your social media, or leave a question or comment below. See you soon!